we're going to take a look at how to put something in one point perspective inside a two point perspective grid. So we'll begin by every time you get a grid you need to make sure that you're very aware of where the eye level is and make the vanishing points as little as you can. This one on this side was a little large. So we know where our two vanishing points are. To draw something in one point perspective you have to find a line on the grid in which it bisects each of the boxes right in half, corner to corner. So you start from the corner of your grid and you look to see, move it, move it, move it until you find the spot where all the lines line up, all the corners. So here we go, we've got this corner lining up and this one and this one and this one. So we're on the right track here. So instead of just drawing it on the floor here, I'm going to bring it right up to my eye level. And that's where you find your single vanishing point for drawing things in one point perspective. And of course, to draw in one point perspective, you just think of that sofa that we spent such a great amount of time figuring out and remember how you started that first box. You can put this one point object anywhere. It can hang from the ceiling, it can, can't be on the walls, it can't be there because they're in two point perspective so you have to keep it on the floor. Now remember how they start. We start a one point perspective box by drawing a straight line as if you could draw this line with your parallel ruler. That would be the best idea and it's facing us all the same distance so you start with a box that doesn't have any perspective at all. And what you're looking for by using the vanishing point is how much smaller it will appear at a more distant view. Now if I want to know how high that is because each of my boxes on my grid represents a um, a foot by a foot, all I have to do is use my one of my vanishing points to bring this to the wall, the bottom to the wall, I'll bring the top to the wall. This isn't a part of my box, it's just a part of my discovery. And then where this hits the corner of the wall and the floor, I bring that up and it meets the top. So this box that I've put at this point on my grid, I just need to find out one corner. How tall is one corner? And I know how big the rest of it is. But it's two and a half feet high. That's how big it is. Now I don't need that anymore now. I need this though to draw the rest of the box. And as soon as you have the top, you're going to have to decide on the depth. So you could choose anything that you liked. If you map this on your floor plan, you'll know exactly where to place it and you'll know exactly how deep to make it because you'll have chosen it to be a certain size. Now this is unfortunate. It lines up with the vanishing point. I'm going to just bring this over so I can make a better choice on how deep it's going to go. So you just go ahead and make a one point perspective box the way that we've been doing it for quite some time now. And if I follow this across, remember it's always important to draw the hidden parts of the box as well. So that's how big it is. And on your floor plan, you will have placed this carefully and decided 
how big you wanted to make it. So you'd have coordinates on your floor plan that would work. So this will just help to clarify what the one point box would look like. Now, as opposed to a two point box, where you use only these two points and you start with a corner. But there will be times when you have a two point perspective drawing and you want to keep it from looking so formal. Everything all going in the same direction. So having this at your disposal can make your drawings look even more realistic. So here's our difference, the difference between the two. You'll notice too that verticals always remain straight because they're the same distance from us throughout their length. They don't need a vanishing point at all. So, and with two point, we have two vanishing points to consult. Just keep it going. So that's the difference. And you see, you could really make things different. If you have a chair turned at a slight angle, it's going to be a little more inviting, perhaps, a little more informal. Or it could be something as simple as a planter or something. A decorative item. So, it's important to notice that these boxes that are in one point perspective, they bisect the boxes corner to corner just the way our initial line did that we needed in order to find our single vanishing point. If you were to map something out on your floor plan, that's exactly how you would do it. If you want something in one point perspective over here, you bisect the boxes right in half. And in half again. And then you see you would mark map these up on your floor plan, on your perspective, you'd have uh, four coordinates to find. So this one would be three boxes back and half a box in from your carpet. 